Thank you for joining the Zifra webinar on the upcoming African Regional Meeting on Libraries and Exceptions to Copyright. Today, it's going to be me, Stephen Weiber, Manager of Policy and Advocacy at IFLA, and Ariadna, my colleague here, uh, Policy and Research Officer, will be sharing our emails at the end. Thank you also to Violetta and all of the colleagues here at IFLA who've helped organise this meeting. So, both this webinar and the meeting we'll be talking about are the second in a series. In addition to the event planned in Africa, there's already been one regional seminar in the Asia Pacific region, and there will be a last one in Latin America and the Caribbean. Each has, or will have, has a webinar focusing on this regional meeting. While much of the content of this web these webinars will be similar, we will be adapting each one to the region we'll be talking about. So, in addition to an explanation of what the regional seminars are about, why we think they're important, what our objectives are, and how you can get involved, we'll also be sharing some initial analysis of what we know about exceptions and limitations in the African region. Now, this is not only a webinar for experts. While the language and laws around copyright may seem inaccessible, its impacts are far-reaching. Copyright is an issue everywhere, from school or village libraries to bigger national and university libraries. And, as you'll hear, it's important that we make as many voices as possible heard in order to show that business as usual is not an option, how important it is to make change happen. That's why we're so happy to have you with us on the call today. The webinar slides and recording will be made available afterwards on the IFLA webpage, so feel free to share the link further and encourage others to listen in. Let me start with a few instructions for those who have never participated in a webinar with this software before. Congratulations first for connecting. If you're having problems with the audio, you should look at the audio settings button on the left. If you have any technical questions, please use the chat option to send any comments or requests for support. Our colleague Violetta, who's sitting next to us off camera, will look to help you. We're keen to make time for you to ask questions and make suggestions, and we'll leave time at the end for this. If you have questions, please use the Q&A button. You can send these at any moment, and we'll try to reply to all of them at the end of the webinar. To give you some background about the regional seminars, let me first tell you a little bit about why copyright is important for libraries and why we get involved with WIPO. So, Copyright is what gives the creator of a work, a book, picture or song, for example, the right to say if someone else can use it or not and ask for compensation. This doesn't just give them control over who can sell a book or make translations, but also allows them to permit or forbid copying for research, education and preservation or lending, for example. Often, authors will sell this right to publishers in exchange for a sum of money, a share of revenues or both. This is why we talk about right holders. Copyright has allowed for the development of the modern book industry and provides a key means of ensuring authors are paid for their works. However, it is also a monopoly which creates a natural tendency to set higher prices and give less permission to use works than people need. In this situation, there is a risk that only those with the money to buy the right to use books and other materials are able to enjoy their rights to education and participation in cultural life. It can also mean that key public interest activities, such as preservation, don't happen because they simply aren't profitable. To combat these problems, we have limitations and exceptions to copyright. These protect the possibility for authors or publishers to earn money from their works, while still ensuring that we do not have the market failures that monopolies can bring. Libraries are, of course, central to achieving this. They are the institutions which bring exceptions and limitations to copyright to life for the benefit of all. Without exceptions and limitations, libraries would not be able to copy, to lend, to support research and education, to preserve or to share for non-commercial purposes. These limitations and exceptions need to keep up with technological change. A rule allowing for photocopying doesn't necessarily apply to digital copying. Interlibrary loan may work with physical books, but not ebooks. When libraries access work using licenses, they can risk losing the possibility to enjoy exceptions. 
the law has to keep up. Of course, copyright exceptions can only be a partial solution. They're not a replacement for proper financial support for our institutions. The same goes for museums, archives, schools and research centres. But nonetheless, in a modern world, libraries need modern exceptions and limitations, a framework that allows them to use digital tools and to work across borders in pursuit of their mission. And too often, they don't have it. So why WIPO? WIPO, if you don't know already, is the World Intellectual Property Organization. It's the United Nations agency in charge of intellectual property, including patents, trademarks, and of course, copyright. As a UN agency, WIPO is open to all United Nations member states to join, and indeed, almost all have done so. WIPO works in a number of different ways. It provides a lot of capacity building and training at the national level manages databases and provides tools for intellectual property offices and also registers patents and trademarks internationally. It also produces valuable research and guidelines for policymakers, creators and users of intellectual property around the world. But the most high profile work it does is doubtless its role in negotiating treaties. Such treaties are essential in order to support the recognition of the rights of creators from one country to the other and vice versa. In doing so, they make it easier to exchange and work across borders. They are a far more efficient way of doing things than bilateral agreements. One treaty can replace hundreds, if not thousands of such one-on-one -on -one deals. But such texts don't only need to be about rights. They can also be about exceptions to rights and how these work across borders. In a globalised world, it is more and more common for libraries to cooperate in order to fulfil their missions. As part of preservation networks, through international document supply, in supporting online distance learning. The exceptions that allow libraries to do their work nationally need to work internationally too. The Marrakesh Treaty to facilitate access to published works for persons who are blind, visually impaired or otherwise print disabled is an example of this. As you may know, this treaty allows libraries and other institutions to make accessible format copies of works for people who are blind, visually impaired, or otherwise print disabled, with no need to request the authorization of the author or right holder. They can also exchange them internationally with countries that have also ratified the treaty. The Marrakesh Treaty in itself is an important step forwards in terms of making it easier for libraries to help users with print disabilities. Nonetheless, as we have seen with Marrakesh, the existence of a treaty can have a major impact. It is the fastest ratifying treaty in the history of WIPO, which shows the interest of member states in fulfilling its objectives. So first of all, as we can see, it has provided the impetus to member states to reform their copyright laws, as well as guidelines on how to do this. Now, of course, changes in national laws are possible without a treaty. We're seeing great work in South Africa at the moment, but for many countries which face different priorities and which may not have the capacity to prepare laws, this is an important precedent, an important impetus. It also makes it clear that such exceptions and limitations are allowed under international law. Copyright reforms can of course become very political and many governments need the reassurance that an organization like the World Intellectual Property Organization can provide. Secondly, it has provided a clear and legal means for libraries to cooperate across borders, because when copyright regimes are too different from one country to the next, when they do not explicitly allow the sharing of works across borders in the context of standard library activities, they stand in the way of progress and the expectations of library users. It's important to note in all of this, just as was the case with the Marrakesh Treaty, this is not a case of destroying markets, Libraries want authors to be fairly remunerated. It's more a case of responding to situations where market solutions are not appropriate for achieving public interest goals. Action around exceptions and limitations to copyright has been on the agenda at WIPO since around 2007, and IFLA has been engaged since the beginning. During meetings of WIPO's Copyright Committee, the Standing Committee on Copyright and Related Rights, or SCCR, there is discussion about exceptions and limitations to copyright. 
based on studies by Professor Kenneth Cruz and the inputs of IFLA, its partners and member states, the committee has explored these provisions in copyright law that allow cultural heritage institutions to perform their mission. This work has underlined the broad support for the work of libraries, but also the costs of excessive inconsistency between national laws or lack of provision for cross-border collaboration. Since 2011, libraries have been promoting the idea of an international treaty on copyright exceptions for libraries, archives and museums. One that establishes a basic set of exceptions for all countries, creating a framework for national copyright laws that is flexible and consistent with existing international law. One that does not seek to impose harmonisation or a one-size-fits-all approach, but that does work across borders. This is what we've seen with Marrakesh. And, as mentioned earlier, this has boosted change at the national level while giving legal provisions for work internationally. While there has been some progress, some members, mainly the European Union, have blocked discussions from going further. They argue that they do not want an international legal instrument, that they do not need one, despite committing to this in 2012. We need to break through this blockage in order to deliver an international solution, both in order to update national laws and to make it easier to work across borders. That is why advocacy work is so important at the World Intellectual Property Organization. Decision makers need to understand the importance of exceptions and limitations to copyright for libraries and take action at the international level. In short, business as usual is not good enough. The provisions that IFLA and its partners believe need to be covered in an international instrument are mainly exceptions to copyright for the following activities. For example, library lending, document supply, preservation of library and archival materials, the use of work for education, research and public stud private study, the use of works for personal and private purposes and access to orphan works. Rules in this area should benefit all of libraries, archives and museums who face very similar challenges in their own work. Indeed, in many cases, they are all part of the same institution and so different rules would prove harmful. All of the exceptions mentioned here, we argue, should work across borders. Libraries should also be allowed to carry to buy books from abroad, even when they're already on sale or someone has the right to sell locally. They should be protected when the contract terms under which they access works try to take away the possibilities given by exceptions to copyright. There should also be the right to remove or get around technological protection measures, digital locks, that prevent libraries, archives and museums from making use of exceptions. And finally, we're calling for a limitation on liability for libraries, archives and museums. Librarians and other professionals should not be responsible for the acts of library users if they've worked be explained well what they can and can't do, or when they make a mistake themselves when acting in good faith. The education and research sector, it's worth adding, has also drafted a treaty whose focus is to ensure that copyright does not stand in the way of education and teaching activities. As mentioned earlier, progress has not always been easy. Representatives of the European Union in particular have blocked efforts by groups of developing countries to move towards some sort of legal instrument. The time has been useful though. We have seen a number of studies that have not only underlined how diverse national provisions are, but also how many countries simply lack modern exceptions or limitations to copyright for libraries, archives and museums. But it's clearly now time to move forwards. Seeing this, the World Intellectual Property Organization Secretariat proposed an action plan, a list of activities that can help create international consensus on the way forwards. One of the most important action points are the three regional seminars. Their goal, according to the action plan, is to analyze the situation of libraries, archives and museums, as well as educational and research institutions, and areas for action with respect to the limitations and exceptions regime and the specificity of the region. The first has already taken place in Singapore for the Asia Pacific region on Monday and Tuesday of this week, 29th, 30th of April. The second one will be held in Nairobi, Kenya on 12th, 13th of June for Africa. And the third and last one will be held in the Dominican Republic in July for Latin America and the Caribbean. At these workshops, 
WIPO is inviting officials from copyright offices from all countries in the region. There will also be WIPO officials and of course civil society organisations such as IFLA, AFLIA and IFL, as well as bodies representing archives, museums and teachers. These meetings are a unique chance to make the case for international action. Rather than theoretical debates between delegates in Geneva, these meetings will hear about what is happening on the ground and you will have an important role in this. We have to raise awareness around the challenges that librarians face in preserving and providing access to cultural heritage and information and in supporting research and education where the right laws are not in place. We need to explain why the national approach is not enough and collaboration at the international level is needed. We need to show how effective libraries benefiting from proper laws can bring major benefits to society without meaning that authors will no longer be paid. Now, as mentioned, we've already had the first of the three seminars held at the National Library Board in Singapore. The meeting was a great opportunity to talk with national officials and to hear about their laws and the experiences of their libraries, archives, museums and educational research bodies. There was a clear recognition that laws needed to change to give librarians, archivists, museum personnel, teachers and researchers certainty about what they can or can't do. To ensure that libraries, archives and museums can use the same rules. To let our institutions carry out preservation across borders. To reflect the expectations and needs of users in a digital age. Indeed, three of the four regional subgroups created by WIPO in the context of the meeting called explicitly for an international instrument. The fourth was also clear that they wanted support internationally to pass better reforms. This seminar has sent a strong message and one that we hope will be repeated in Africa and in Latin America and the Caribbean. After the three regional seminars have taken place, the conclusions will be brought to an international conference on exceptions and limitations. This will take place in October in Geneva, right before WIPO's Copyright Committee meets. What is said in Nairobi, as well as in Singapore and Santo Domingo, will have an echo and will help build momentum for change. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Ariadna, who will talk a little bit about the initial analysis that we have carried out of copyright, of where copyright laws and exceptions currently stand in Africa, and what this might mean for libraries. Ariadna. Thanks, Stephen. Um, so yes, as Stephen mentioned, one of the very useful things that WIPO has done in the past years is commission studies that look at the overview of exceptions and limitations to copyright for libraries, uh, archives, museums, as well for, as for education and research in WIPO member states. So we've had a look at uh, what this study says for libraries in the African region, um, a study that, by the way, was developed by Professor Kenneth Cruz from the US. Um, and overall, we've seen that in the region, there are still a lot of countries with no exceptions and limitations at all. Uh, and out of the 53 countries that we have analyzed, uh, there's a total of 13 countries with no, libraries no library exception and 10 countries that only have a general exception. One of the most popular exceptions that we've seen in the region is for research copying. 27 out of the uh, 53 countries covered uh, have such an exception. However, this means almost half of the countries covered do not. Moreover, even in those countries which do have such an exception, a third places limits on the number of copies that can be taken. In the, in the digital age, this does not make sense at all. Even providing a single copy to a user will require many to be taken as part of the technological process. Similarly, 28 countries out of the 53 analyzed have exceptions for preservation and 27 for taking replacement copies. But there, two thirds of exceptions place limits on the number of copies as well. This effectively makes the exception completely useless for digitization. Overall, there is a, a clear uh, lack of adequate exceptions. Furthermore, basic public interest activities conducted by libraries are also restricted by the fact that only one country has an interlibrary loan provision, this is South Africa, and only Algeria has a document supply provision. Only Cote d'Ivoire, Sao Tome and Malawi allow libraries to give access to works on dedicated terminals, 
Meanwhile, only Zambia and Zimbabwe have rules allowing libraries to use orphan works. And no countries at all offer a limitation on liability of library professionals or exceptions for out of commerce works or text and data mining. Further barriers to using digital materials come from digital locks, technological protection measures that you may have heard about, or contract terms. So while circumventing technological protection measures is forbidden in 28 countries out of the 53 analyzed, only six of them allow libraries to remove or get around them when making uses under the exceptions or limitations to copyright. Other key provisions needed in the digital world are also almost in existence, such as contract override, no country in the African region has such a provision, or temporary reproductions for computer processes, which only appears in a country. Furthermore, the wording in the permanent collection uh, to limit the works that can be copied for preservation or replacement purposes appears in the law of 21 countries. This condition does not take into consideration the fact that many works are accessed through licensing agreements and are therefore not placed permanently in the library collections. These works are still considered important to the library collections and therefore libraries should be able to preserve them. Only eight countries in the region have flexible provisions such as fair use or fair dealing, uh, but regrettably in the cases of fair dealing provisions, not all of them are extended to library activities. And while several member states uh, have copyright reforms, have had copyright reforms in the past years, they do not systematically make the necessary changes to adapt exceptions and limitations to the digital world. That means that even though copyright reforms might take place, which uh, still doesn't happen as usual as we would like, they do not necessarily address the changes that are necessary to libraries. Globally, existing exceptions and limitations in the region are clearly not adapted to the digital world. They were designed for a time where information was mainly used in analog supports and not digitally as it should be used right now and do not respond to the needs of libraries and their users in a digital and globalized world. So, uh, IFLA, Eiffel and AFLIA will be present uh, together with other international partners at the regional seminar in Kenya. We will defend the interests of the profession and call for copyright regimes that favor access to information. We will bring examples of the work that libraries do in the region and how it is impacted by copyright. We will also underline the benefits of cross-border collaboration and the need for an international instrument. We will work closely with archives, museums, education and research organizations in order to defend our common needs and to ensure that our voices are heard. But it is member states themselves who will have the most powerful voices in this seminar. They are the ones whose contributions will feed into the discussions that will happen later in Geneva and they are the ones who will take final decisions about WIPO's future work. To ensure that they do defend libraries in, in their regional seminar, it is vital that they are prepared for they travel, before they travel, apologies. And this is where you come in. In short, we need you to convince your government, uh, the government office in charge of copyright in your country, of the importance uh, of the right copyright laws for libraries, both nationally and internationally. Here's what you can do about it. First of all, you could identify national contacts on copyright law at the SCCR. Almost every United Nations member state is represented at WIPO. If you cannot find the name of the person in the Copyright Office, uh, IFLA will be happy to help you. Um, you will see our contact details in a later slide and we will also share the slides so you will be able to reach us easily. You can also write to the government ahead of the SCCR meetings or the regional seminars, highlighting that libraries um, are doing a great job in the country and why they need a better copyright reform. Make sure that they have heard about the concerns of the library sector be before they come to these meetings and make sure they hear support from, international, from an international treaty from the library sector nationally. We will provide you with uh, some ideas on how you can do this. Share examples of how copyright impacts your work. These are the most valuable things we could use in these regional seminars and will help us show that the work you're doing uh, is relevant and that it needs a better copyright. We can voice this um, in front of your representatives in the regional seminars. 
so I think that's everything from our side and we would really welcome having questions from your side. Uh, we will make the recording of the webinar and the slides available on our webpage. We will also share this through social media and through the mailing list through which you received the, the announcement of the webinar. Uh, so feel free to use the Q&A button for any questions and thank you very much. And as, uh, as mentioned, uh, our emails uh, will be made available in the last slide. So if any questions pop up later, uh, feel free to email us and we'll be very happy to, to inform you about anything you need. So thank you, Demolale, for your question. So for everyone to hear, what are the plans to engage civil society organizations whose work aligns with access to information uh, with a view to push for these outcomes. So I, I can start and then Ariadna will, will, will complement on this. Um, one of the issues that we've come across at WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization, is that it's an organization that's very dominated by lawyers, by copyright specialists, and by those actors who depend extensively on copyright. So often publishers, authors, collecting societies, people like that. One of the arguments that we are trying to make very strongly is that actually getting copyright right is something that matters for a variety of sectors. Now, for clearly in the case of libraries, we can talk a lot about preservation, about research. Teachers will talk about education, but there's work to do to show that anyone who is interested in health information or education or any other subject has an interest in getting the right sorts of copyright. So what I would suggest is firstly share this webinar, which we hope is simple and clear enough for people who haven't looked that much at copyright before to understand. Give others ideas and encourage them. Let us know what sort of material will convince them. We're always ready to produce blogs, to produce materials in order to try and convince others and bring them on side. I know that you, Demolari, have been very engaged in questions around the Sustainable Development Goals. And there, there's a very strong argument for saying that better copyright exceptions and limitations will contribute to safeguarding cultural heritage. They'll contribute to supporting research, and in particular, research sharing across borders. So it's simply a case of making the link in our arguments and just trying to make sure that copyright doesn't look scary, it doesn't look technical, it doesn't look excessively legal, but it's something where if we get the right answers, there's, there's a lot in it. There's potential for development, there's potential for greater equity. And uh, if I may add to that, um, so as mentioned, we are going to be there, but many people who have at stake in this uh, will regrettably not be able to be present in the regional seminar. But that doesn't mean that you cannot provide input or participate or have an impact on what is going to happen there. So feel free to look at the, at the list here before on how NGOs, civil society, um, and, and librarians in general can engage in what is going to take place because uh, collaboration at the national level is going to be key for the success of the regional seminar. So another question, Demolare. So do we have an existing framework to coordinate these activities? And where do we have access to data to convince policymakers, government and stakeholders, etc.? Now, on the second question first, we have produced a large variety of materials on copyright. And something we'll be doing in the coming days is creating just a page on these WIPO regional seminars where we collect some of this information together to give you a single place to actually find anything relevant about it. In terms of coordination, we're more than happy to, we can find, I don't know, send on contact details and anyone else on this call, please send on contact details. A really good idea is to join our copyright and other legal matters network. Uh, it's an existing mailing list for anyone interested in copyright and library issues, where we share relevant materials that we create as well as news stories. And that's another place where there's a great potential to share ideas. 
exactly. Um, just to mention, if you've got French speaking colleagues, there's another webinar coming up on exactly the same things we explained today. It's going to take place next Tuesday and you'll find all the relevant information on our web, web page. And, and yes, we agree, Teresa. So sending in examples is powerful. I, I can, to share what happened in Singapore, it was incredibly powerful when we could go into there and talk about the situation of a library in Papua New Guinea or the situation of a library in Malaysia because for all of the legal discussion about what was possible or what was in line with international law or how you defined or understood particular terms, suddenly that all disappears when you talk about actually what libraries are doing on the ground. It's very difficult to continue to block things or to find legal arguments not to make progress when you're faced with someone who is prevented from doing something that's clearly part of their mission and for the public good simply because of a law that hasn't been updated for too long or because of lobbying that prevents it from happening. So those examples, the ways in which you have provided information to people and where copyright has been involved, those examples are really powerful. So just to agree with Teresa on that point. So we'll give you, what we can do is we'll click through to the final slide so you can see that our email, you can see our email addresses. So there you have both of our email addresses. Please feel free to, to get in touch if you have further questions. Um, we can, if you get in touch, we can give you details about how to join the CLM, the Copyright and Other Legal Matters Network. Um, where we will also share the page with our resources for these regional meetings. And we'll of course be happy to answer any further questions that you have by email. So thank you everyone for your time. Thank you very much, nothing else to add. And <laughs> um, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Bye, thanks.